Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You've downloaded the fully working free trial of Exposure X7, or maybe you've purchased it outright. Either way, you're ready to edit your first image in it. I thought it would be helpful if I just do a basic edit in Exposure X7, showing you how I go about editing an image. And hopefully this will help you get started using the application. All right, right off the top, I'm gonna to throw a couple keyboard shortcuts at you, but I'm not going to do that extensively in this video. Uh, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to Exposure's website. There, they have what they call a keyboard shortcut map that you could download. It's a PDF that shows all the keyboard shortcuts for this application. Also, I wanna add that all the keyboard shortcuts are customizable, meaning you could make a keyboard shortcut yourself, basically. Uh, to do that, you would go to Preferences. If you're using a Mac, Preferences is under the Exposure X7 menu at the top. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. When you open Preferences, you could see that a short, a short way down on the left-hand side is Shortcuts. And these are the... Um, keyboard shortcuts for the application. So you could come in here and try to find a keyboard shortcut, and you could also change a keyboard shortcut to something maybe you're more familiar with using from another app. But again, in the description below this video, I will have a link so that you could download their PDF of keyboard shortcuts. All right, now I mentioned I'm gonna throw a few at you right at the top, and then that's probably the limit of the keyboard shortcuts I'll be using in this video. I just wanna close down the left panel the keyboard shortcut for that on a Mac is Shift Command Left Arrow. And I want to close down the bottom panel that's Shift Command Bottom Arrow. And then I have some information displayed up here. This was taken with the Nikon Z72. You can see the date I took it, uh, the resolution of the image, the exposure info. The lens was a 24 to 70 and it was shot at 25 millimeters. I want to get rid of that. Uh, that's Command I on a Mac. And you could get rid of that. All right, now. That's enough keyboard shortcuts. Let's edit the image. Over on the right-hand side, we have all the different controls in all these different tabs or panels. And I'll just start right uh, with cropping. I like to crop right away. I really don't need to crop the image, but it is a little bit crooked. So I'm gonna open up the crop tool. And you could see we have the rule of thirds overlay. But what I wanna do, and by the way, you could change the overlays uh, right here. So the composition guide, you could go to golden ratio, and so on, but I'm gonna stay with rule of thirds. I'm not really worried about that though, I wanna straighten it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come off the image and you can see how the cursor turns into this kind of semicircular double arrow. Click with the left mouse button, I get a nice tight grid and I can now kind of push it up and kind of align it so it's straight. Make sure that horizon line is straight. That, and when I'm done, I just close down the crop tool. And there we have our straightened image. All right, let's go to the basic tab. What I like to do first is profile, and I'm just gonna stay with the standard profile, nothing there. Then what I wanna do next is white balance, and I think white balance is fine as well. Then what I do next after that, which I haven't done anything yet, is I adjust tone. And I look at the tone of the image and I see what is most you know, the most problematic. Uh, is it underexposed? Are the shadows too dark or are the highlights too bright or something like that? In this case, this image is slightly underexposed because the sky had some very bright parts in it. So when I took the shot, I didn't want to blow out the sky. So I underexposed this slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to exposure and I'll push that up a touch. All right. And you could always come back in and readjust things. All right. Now, maybe I'll bring that down just a little. Yeah, more like that. Okay, so now we have our uh, exposure better. Next, I'll go to highlights and I'll bring in those brighter parts a little bit by pulling that down. And shadows, I'll push that to the right a little bit to open those up. 
Now I want to get a white and black point. And those of you that use Lightroom, this uses a similar style to get white and black points in that you hold in the Alt Option key, Alt if you have PC, Option if you have a Mac, click on the white slider, and when you do that, the entire screen will turn black. You can move the whites to the right until you get some white or colors bleeding through. That means you're starting to clip those areas, and then you just back it off until all of that disappears. That's the way I like to do it, at least, until it just disappears. And just like that. And similarly for the black shoe, again, hold in that Alt Option key, click with that, and you get a white screen this time, and you move this to the left, and you'll see I'm just starting to clip some blacks uh, in there, and I like to do that. I like to clip the shadows a little bit. And that's that. Now, I'm going to add some contrast. We'll go up here, and I'm going to probably clip again a little more, but I just want to add, make it a little more like, I don't know, interesting looking with some contrast. So, so far it looks pretty good. If I want to see a before, after, go up here, or you could also hit the backslash key on your keyboard. And just there, there's before, and there's after, before, after. I think it's looking pretty good. Now we'll go down, I, I you know, I, I'll try dynamic contrast. On some images it looks great. On this one it's kind of blowing out the sky. Haze level, if I want to add haze to the image, or maybe kind of remove haze and make it a little more contrasty. I don't want to do that. To reset any slider in Exposure X7, just double click right on the slider and you'll reset it to its default position. I'm going to add some clarity. And it already had some vibrance added for some reason. And, um, you know, I think that looks pretty good. Now we go through, uh, we could sharpen it. Um, I like to do noise reduction first, usually. So I'd zoom in by just clicking on the image and zoom in. Now this, um, if I remember right, was it shot at ISO 64, I think, right? Yeah, ISO 64. So there isn't really any noise to speak of here. So I really am not worried about doing any noise reduction. Uh, it's pretty sharp. Um, I mean, do we really need to sharpen it? I know when I was first starting out uh, with digital photography, editing images um, on a computer, I felt every image had to get sharpened everything but you know really that's not the, the case you don't need to sharpen an image if it doesn't need it you really don't you don't just because that slider's there doesn't mean you have to move it now with color i don't think i need to do anything here uh, perhaps in a future video i'll do an image that isn't just a basic edit like this that's a little more of advanced edit where i am actually going to be doing things with these um, other controls that I'm not using in this video. Maybe for this video though, I will do something with color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the luminance and I'll go to blue and I'll show you that if I move this down, I can make that blue sky darker or move it up and I make it brighter. And typically I think the sky is fine the way it is. I'm not going to do anything with that. But what I want to do is uh, the greens and yellows. I want to affect those. So I'm going to make the greens a little darker. And I'm going to make the yellows a little brighter. And that will kind of give me a little more tonal variance in the grass. You see, as it was before, let me reset those. We kind of had this kind of uniform green. And really, grass tends to not be that way. If you look at it more closely, um, it's more patchy. So you have darker parts and you have brighter parts. And I think this, <laughs> moving these two sliders in this manner, gives me that tonal variant. So we have darker greens, brighter greens, and so on. We just got to be careful that we don't overdo it so other parts of the image get affected. But I think that's all I'm going to do there uh, just to affect that. And um, pretty much, you know, you have a lot of things you could do. We have tone curve here. The tone curve is a parametric curve. So you could come in and move sliders down here. And it's a point curve as well. So you could add points if you needed to. Um, we could use LUTs. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I am going to do a vignette. Now, the vignette control works uh, opposite of Lightroom. So if you're familiar with Lightroom, you'd move it to the left to get a dark vignette and right to get a light vignette. It's opposite here. So I'm just going to add a light vignette, and I'll mess around with size here, kind of pull it off the side. I just want it on the edges a little bit, uh, just like that. You could also center it with the location. Click there. And you could click and uh, get a vignette location uh, for it. Don't need to do anything there. Though I'm fine with the basic default uh, vignette. 
And that's it. I think I'm pretty much done. There's before. I have to hold in the backslash key. And there's after. Before? After. So this type or what I did in this video, I think are adjustments that you probably do to just about every image you edit in Exposure X7. And hopefully this will help you get started using it. Now in a future video, I will use uh, some different adjustments. I'll do one that needs noise reduction, that needs some sharpening done to it, that needs maybe the tone curve added to it and so on. And we'll use uh, some more stuff down here so you can see how to do slightly more advanced edits. Then maybe we'll do another video after that where we really are doing some more creative edits and using the bokeh and the grain and focus in these other controls. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.